Tara, your work around neuroscience and how that can be applied to leadership mm -hmm. is quite fascinating. Can you just give us a background what it entails? Okay, so neuroscience is the study of the nervous system and we're most interested um, from the leadership point of view in the brain, but the nervous system is also the spinal cord and all the nerves in the body. One of the things that's really important for leadership is really understanding and utilizing the brain-body connection. So rather than thinking that there's a cut off at the neck and what goes on in your thinking and your leadership ability isn't affected by what goes on your, in your body, it's about integrating that and understanding that the mind is, is embodied. So the, there's four main ways that I apply neuroscience to leadership and that's to leadership resilience. So um, there's a lot of stress in um, leadership, some industries more than others at the moment. So keeping the leaders resilient to change and public scrutiny is really important. Then for those leaders to leverage diversity of thinking out of their teams and for the organization to create the conditions for success and that means physically in the environment, like the sort of offices that you have and the light and the temperature, but also chemically in terms of the hormones that flourish when there's trust in an organization and how that makes people make decisions and take risks differently. Um, and finally, for innovating into the future. So if you knew more about how your brain worked and the impact on yourself and others, you might make some different decisions about how you run your business going forward. I mean, over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of developments in leadership theories mm -hmm. across board. But a complaint that CEOs and leaders often have is the science is there, the theories are there, mm -hmm. but embedding it into an organization is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. How do you overcome that? So I think that neuroscience has an advantage since the advent of brain scanning. So that gives a very tangible, physical element to the data that you can apply to leadership and business. So although psychology has informed business for decades, um, a lot of businesses and leaders don't see that as an empirical science. So when you've actually got evidence from brain scanning or blood tests or you know, whatever data that people can actually relate to, it, I think, increases that point of interest and that willingness to actually engage with applying neuroscience. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies are becoming more global and having more diverse teams. Mm -hmm. Has that proven to be a success? in those situations? I prefer to talk about diversity of thinking. So how agile are you with your brain? Are you using logic as well as intuition, empathy, creativity? Um, in teams, are you getting the right complement of people that think sufficiently differently that you're, you know, you're getting the sort of best um, decisions made or sort of um, the best kind of variety of thought that you can bring to any issue? Just to end off, of course, leadership starts way before someone becomes a chief executive or mm -hmm. chief investment officer. Mm -hmm. Can we see in the future that some of these principles will be applied earlier on in school or business mm -hmm. school? Mm -hmm. You know, I actually think that schools are doing a really good job of this. So things like children having to, um, you know, have water with them in the classroom. These are actually some of the small things that make a big difference. So your hydration level affects your memory and your concentration. So I'm passionate about business schools applying some of the same things. Another major area that I think requires work in business schools is about encouraging men to have a wider emotional vocabulary. Because if you don't have a word to express how you're feeling, you can't deal with that issue. And we've still got a bit of a culture of, um, you know, big boys don't cry um, and talk about their feelings. So I think I'd love to see something happen about that from a young age, but also at business schools. Of course, you're in South Africa, but you'll be coming back again on the 18th of March mm -hmm. for a conference. Can you give us more details about that? Yes, it's a conference that is um, going to be hosted by Gibbs and BRG um, Progress Conference. And um, the title is Neuroscience for Leadership. It's a day of thought leadership. It's the 18th of March, as you said. Um, and I will be taking people through everything that they need to know about how their brain works to be a better leader, a better team player, to uh, set up the conditions for success in their organization and to innovate into the future. Dr. Taraswat, thank you so much for your time thank and we you. wish you all the best. Thanks.